Chris Billum Smith can make this Bournemouth homecoming dream become reality. Thank <laughs> you. 
champion. Everything he's won, won before him. A stadium full of haters, I don't care. He can never take what's mine. time again down the years. Akoli has trodden this path, not one quite like this, it has to be said, but this is a fourth defence of his WBO World Cruiserweight title. Robert Smith of the British Boxing Board of Control, just seeing if he can coax Lawrence Akoli out of this dressing room. And that really, this is what he's kind of done all week. He's played the role of the champ, he is the champ, of course. But when he came to the workouts, he was asked, how do you think you're going to win this fight? And he said, well, I wasn't too sure, but now I've seen him in the flesh today, I think I'm going to stop him. He doesn't say too much about sparring. He feels that it's a given that really he had the better of it over those 300 plus rounds. He's undefeated, no one has ever come remotely close to beating him. We saw him in Manchester at the end of March. He was criticised after a year out, the first fight with a new trainer. His answer, to come here into Billum Smith's backyard 63 days later. In modern boxing, nobody does this. No, but I think those rounds that he got against, like after the inactivity with a new trainer, will really stand to him tonight. Whatever you want to say about Lawrence Okole, some of his performances haven't been the most fan friendly, let's say. But he's always found a way to win. He's very effective, physically, deceivingly very strong, and hits really hard, especially with the right hand. Were you surprised to see him take on this challenge, George? Give Billum Smith the voluntary, come here. I mean, it's hard to work out what the exact um, lay of the land was in the cruiserweight division. Obviously, Chris Billum Smith and his team were campaigning for a world title fight, and Shane explained earlier about how they arrived at Lawrence Akoli, and they were the ones who suggested it. And Lawrence has said, "Well, yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll take that." He's looking for big fights. He's looking to rebuild himself on Sky now, and this is the perfect fight for him in terms of a stadium fight. This is the opponent who's essentially sold all the tickets. So he wins tonight and he gains all that, you know, all that momentum from this huge occasion. You know what I was saying as well earlier, sometimes your best performance comes off the back of a not so good performance because you, you, you kind of analyse your preparations and the fight to cope with that. And he from that a little bit more. So I think I think Akoli will, will start pretty sharp here. Yeah, he needs to prove a point, man. as George was saying, and there's our bell just being held aloft in the corner there. That's what this is all about. Pressure is a privilege. 
message. That's been the message from Willem Smith during the course of the week. But both of these two have handled it well. They have handled it well. But now, well, it is time for business. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your main event of the evening. Scheduled for 12 three minute rounds. It is for the WBO Cruiserweight Championship of the World. Brought to you by our headline partner, Bet365, and our official partners, Everlast, Wow Hydrate, Village Hotels, CT1, and Who Dares Gym. This championship main event is promoted by Ben Shalom and Boxer and brought to you live on Sky Sports. Our supervisor in charge, Eastman Kovacs, our board representative, Robert Smith, and our timekeeper, John Smith. Our judge to ringside, Bob Williams, Benjamin Rodriguez, and Diana Drews Milani. And our referee in charge when the bell rings, Marcus McDonald. So, board It's been a great fight week down here in Bournemouth. Everything about it has been spectacular. And it has all been leading up to this moment. Former gym mates squaring off against each other for the WBO World Cruiserweight title. Akoli in the black and green, Willem Smith in the black, gold and red. And Akoli looking to aim a right hand early on there, getting on top of Willem Smith and backing him up to the ropes. Both guys starting sharp here. Coley with that cronkish style already. A little bit more upright, looking to shoot that long jab. Chris gliding across the floor as opposed to bouncing, deciding that's a safer route. And both guys working when they come together. They want to win every second of every round, it feels. Well, 
Adams is just coughing on the inside of Coley, just holding him round the back of the head. It's rough up close already. Coley backing up, looking for that long right hand into the body. Trying to send that big right hand over the top. Billy Smith, though, and good glove position there. His left hand was up where it needed to be. Yeah, that would be vital for Chris tonight to take that right hand away from Lawrence and Coley. Yeah, and he's moving to his right as well, Billy Smith, away from the right hand, forcing Coley to move to the right. the body there from McCauley, really sets himself for that one and then just pushes Billum Smith back and Billum Smith cannot really afford the fight to be there because he knows better than anybody after all the sparring. If you get sucked into the quicksand of having a clinch and a wrestle with McCauley, you could be in trouble, right hand from McCauley. See the catch, Billum Smith high on the head, the knees maybe just dips a little bit but he looks okay. Yeah, I thought he walked on to that. I want to see the replay because I thought his knees buckled slightly, but it seems like his head's cleared now. Yeah, Coley now starting to try and measure that right hand. Arm whistles over the top. And Chris comes back with his own right hand. And he's backing up and giving himself the room here, Akoli. Just holding that left hand out, trying to measure with the right. Still not really able to plant that jab. That's something we've always wanted to see from him, but there are differences here. I think Billy Smith's got to apply the pressure, but he can't get reckless because Lawrence is going to try and use that feint, take a little half step back and walk him up to it. So he's got to be careful, he's got to be educated pressure from Billy Smith. You're right, Matt. Both players still trying to find their rhythm, but they're forcing it with effort. It's... seconds of round one. McCauley just flexes those knees. Looked like he was going to try and launch that right hand up from low. Let's have a listen into the Willem Smith corner. After he got caught with the right hand, so I think mean, the knee did, did buckle momentarily, but I think he, he shook it up pretty quickly. Agreed, that was definitely what it looked like. The right hand quite high on the head, and a colleague just steps in immediately there, and then loads with the one two. He's looking very aggressive in there, a colleague. Yeah, well, I think the you know, this is Billum Smith who's stepping up to a lot of level, so the, the, the sooner Akoli can try and kill that belief, kill that confidence, the better for him. Well, we heard Shane McGuigan in the corner there asking Chris Billum to faint. We wanted to do faint before the work and we wanted to move around to his right, probably trying to take Lawrence's right hand out of play. There was a nice long, loose right hand from Akoli about 20 seconds ago. Billum Smith rode it well, he pulled his feet back out by the time it landed. There's nothing really left on it, but that is what Sugar Hill will want from a Coley. Find that distance and just shoot it straight down the middle. He was in quick there, Marcus McDonald, to break these two apart, and people have talked during the week about the importance of the referee in this one. There's that right hand again. Billy Smith just maybe getting slightly frustrated. Well, I think what, one of the things that Paul is so good at is he doesn't really allow his opponents to gain any rhythm in the fight because he keeps it at long range and then he ties them on close range and he doesn't really let them get anything off. And, you know, 
when you can't get your jab going, you can't put combinations together, and you've got no rhythm, everything becomes forced, and it's a lot more tiring then. Yeah, you're right, Matt. You've either got to tease the shot out of a Coley and then counter, or you've got to back him up with head movement, or with the feints that Shane McGuigan was asking for. Otherwise, a Coley's just going to wait, 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 and then try and release that right hand. Left hand into the body from a Coley. Billy Smith just covering up well there. He caught the right hand to the head with the left glove and then dropped the elbow to take the pep off the body shot. He's fired back with a short left hook himself as well. Yeah, Billy good, Smith. good catch and fire from Chris Billy Smith. The Billum Smith corner just screaming at Marcus McDonald, which they will do during the course of the fight. Billum Smith just comes forward there, and again they just fall into each other. That was the pair of them though that time. That was good from Billum Smith, just moved in right hand into the body, followed it up with a left. Tries to chop down with the right on the inside. Sugar Hill's got to say. And bang! He ready for it now. Well, he's standing there waiting on you. You pumping it, you got him moving his hands right where you want him to. You gotta just take the leg and put it down here. You got it too wide. Uh -huh. Look at me, look at me. That's all you got to do. Uh -huh. The man ready, you keep backing up with it. Pump, pump, bang, bang, that's the leg and the rhythm go. Uh -huh. There's more bottles to the house, that's the rhythm go. Right. Getting a little flat, trying to just get it. It's gonna come once you relax. Right. Pop, pop, play bang. Action, push your mates. Keep pumping at this so we can get it over. Caught him right here with a good one there. All you gotta do is go back to the fucking basement. Well, the atmosphere in here is off the charts. It has been from about 6 o'clock this evening. Marcus McDonald is making it clear to the corner there that there was an accidental clash of heads, so maybe there's a little bit of damage to one of them. I can't really see it. They wanted to make that point to the economy corner. It is absolute basics that he's drilling Sugar Hill in the gym and on the night there because he's just talking about jab, double jab, right hand, just let your hands go nice and loose. He's asking Norris Coley to relax. That's where he's going to find the, the power shot, that's where he's going to find the timing. At the moment, he's a little bit forced and then he wants to wrestle with Chris Benham Smith. Once Chris Benham Smith finds that comfort in the inside, that is maybe where he might start to take over more naturally inside fire. Well, Marcus McDonald having a stern word with Akoli there about holding, about clinching, and that will be a welcome sight for the Billum Smith corner. Everything is at the discretion of the referee, whether he warns, whether he takes a point, whether he takes two points, there's no three strikes and you're out. Victor Lockman took three points off Akoli against Matty Askin at Wembley. All those years ago, many felt that he should have disqualified him. He chose not to. McCauley won't be wanting to lose any points here. Good right hand into the body there for McCauley. I think he's poor with that left hand a little bit too much. I think he needs to just pop the jab out, throw the one-two in. McCauley is a little bit he over hesitant. He's managing to get inside that right hand pretty well, Billum Smith. But as he moves forward, he's just struggling to getting anything off particularly clean. And there's that right hand again, and it looks good, but he's got that left glove up and it's not really getting through. Yeah, mccauley has got quite good variation with his right hand. He's targeting the body, he's trying to bring it around the side, straight to the head, and a slight arc over the top of Chris Billumsev's high left hand. throw that right hand up the middle. William Smith just keeping organised, keeping things together. 
He falls in a lot of Coley, doesn't he? That's where the clinching comes. He throws the shot and then he falls in on top. And it smothers his own work as well. Right hand from the Coley. Borderline legal, really. It's round the back and into the back. He's looked for that long right to the body, but Billum Smith is managing to drop the elbow on it. Go. Good one, two there from McCauley, but Billum Smith took that well and comes forward. Yeah, Chris Billum Smith needs to just get his shots off a little bit sharper, I think, if he's going to go for that sort of counter punch, catching fire, be a little bit sharper. physical fight. I mean, these guys are wrestling and it'd be really interesting to see how their stamina and fitness holds up down, you know, as this bout goes on. Billy Smith took a left hand there. Again, he covered up well. Lead left hook from McCauley. It seemed to land nice and solid, but he didn't blink Billy Smith. And as I said previously, he's just holding it together here. His shape is good. He looks nice and robust in there. Nicole is putting quite a lot into these early rounds, that's another thing I would say. Swung himself off balance. Akoli gets on top of him, pushes him into the ropes. Oh, good save! Start of this round, Akoli 
finish straight away, opting to close the range and almost hold. Dylan Smith with that nice tight guard, moving those shoulders, just walking in almost, trying to get that short left hook off. And again looking for the left hand as Akoli comes forward. Smith should be thinking about fainting now. Twitch, Twitch Akoli out of his skin, getting worried about what's coming back because he still doesn't seem right. I think he's still buzzed from that last round. Yeah, they'll react a lot more now to the faints. The fact he's been buzzed and hurt, the faints that Billy Smith gives him, Akoli will react twice as much now. Looking to line up that big right hand, but again, Billy Smith just takes it on the gloves. Smith walking it back towards that neutral corner, right above us. And Bill Smith just backing him up here, just taking that space with the front foot. Nicole's offering it and he's taking it. Time out here called by Marcus McDonald. And a point is gone. A point is gone for holding. So that last round would have been 10-8. This could be a 10 8 as well because Bill and Smith, by my reckoning, is winning this round. And this fight has turned around in the last couple of rounds. And he's having another stern word with Akoli there. This is an absolute crisis for Lawrence Akoli. Make no mistake about it. Well, that was something that was raised by Team Bill and Smith was that Akoli will hold and that referee Marcus McDonald can't allow that to happen. Yeah, you know, now he's under pressure, Akoli, because. He gets another point off. You know, he's, not, he's only another warning away there from a potential disqualification. And... Looking for the uppercut there, Riccoli. And this stadium has been in five voice all the way through, but they're just beginning to sense now that they could be on the verge of some history here, but there is still a very, very long way to go. Let's go to Anna and Johnny at ringside. Johnny, this fight isn't disappointing, is it? A huge round four there for Chris Bill and Smith. Nobody saw that coming, did they? Concerns straight away was the referee letting Lawrence get away with grabbing and holding. He'll punch and on his way in, halfway through landing the shot, he'll grab. When he actually got hit with a shot, he was turning away after getting after that unorthodox grab. But he wasn't actually facing uh, Chris, and Chris caught him with a left uppercut. He suffered the consequences because he was off balance, and it was a good shot. Dropped him down that left hook as he stepped back. Out. But right here, right now, about time the referee has pulled him. Now, about time the referee is making him be apprehensive about going into grabbing hold. He needs to put a stop to that. He needs oh, to make Lawrence yeah. think, I've got to knock more out of this. So very quickly, what does Chris need to do to get this one over the line? Keep your hands high, keep walking down, make Lawrence get himself in trouble. Because well, that's instinctively what six. Lawrence is going to do. So into the sixth, the Coley with a nice crisp jab. Straight out of the gate, Billum Smith trying to come in behind his own left, short right there from McCauley. He absolutely cannot get careless here, Billum Smith. Yes, there's been a momentum shift over the last couple of rounds, but it is still so early in the fight, we are not even a halfway. I think he's got to try and pressure McCauley with the feet, plenty of head movement, lots of feints as well, try and trigger him, get Coley to lead off with the right hand, then you know, parry it, catch it, and then step on him. Yeah, this was a physical fight from the get-go. It's going to be exhausting down the stretch. And even though Chris Billumsif drops Lawrence Akoli, that feeling of the fight, excitement, adrenaline, the fight could be possibly be over, that can be a little bit energy sapping as well. Akoli just going for that right hand again. Billumsif protected himself well, but 
At some point, the chances are one of them will get through. Strong and solid. Nicole leaning on Bill and Smith over on the far side. Bill and Smith with his back half turned there. The crowd are booing, but this is a physical fight, as George has been saying, and every time it gets a bit messy, it's not necessarily always a Coley's fault. Yeah, Chris Bill and Swift needs to stay switched on. He needs to get back to that sort of that sharper pace that he had a round and a half ago. The Coley's come out and worked hard in his sixth round, just over a minute remaining in it. Smith with a Coley again, just walks him back across the ring. But then Smith looks at Marcus McDonald, but there's nothing wrong with that. You can lean in, you can walk your man back into the neutral corner, get on top of him, bring that physicality to bear. And again, Billy Smith is complaining here. He doesn't want to go down this road too much. I think it's the hold in there, isn't he? Well, Marcus McDonald is speaking to Lawrence and Coley again here about the holding. As I said earlier on, everything is at the discretion of the referee because he's taken a point once. It doesn't mean that the next time McCauley does something similar, he has to take another one. Big back hand there from Billum Smith. Caught McCauley on the chin. Yeah, he shot a right hook to the belly and he followed it with a swift left hook to the, to the head. McCauley appeared to have took it quite well. He's back punching. Good right hand there from McCauley. Good shot. Ben Smith took it well. Interesting stuff from Shane McGuigan in the corner. He was really animated with Billum Smith. He had a pretty weary look on his face, I have to say, as he was sat on his stool. And McGuigan telling him, listen, when Coley falls in, let him fall in. Use your legs, create the space, and you will get the next punch. He felt in that round that when Coley did fall forward, George, Billum Smith didn't give any ground, and then he's on you. Yeah, he's... It's so, it's so hard to gauge. When, I mean, imagine being in, in the fight and Akoli, he's throwing big shots, and you're trying to find a range. Do you want to make him miss and then, and then counter? Because Akoli can change change the angle that right hand very well, and that's probably where he's had a lot of success tonight. One of his best shots has been that right hook right behind Chris Billingsworth's left elbow. He doesn't want to be giving away them free body shots because they do accumulate in the later rounds. And as we've been saying, this is an intensely physical fight and we're only just past halfway. A Coley just buffeting Bill and Smith back into the ropes. Through three rounds, you would have said that a Coley was ahead and Bill and Smith with a knockdown in the fourth, then the point off in the fifth, another round that he won. There wasn't much in that sixth. But again, Marcus McDonald talking to him this time about putting the shoulder in. It's a good-looking jab there from McCauley. We don't see that from him enough. Oh, referee, come on! Shane McGuigan, furious there. Point. Furious there, he felt that McCauley just jabbed to the body and then moved straight in and grabbed hold of him. McCauley getting a final warning there from Marcus McDonough. But the thing is, what Marcus not only jabbed and then stepped in and grabbed hold of him, there was no attempt to, to, to throw punches. Now that was very obvious that time, very obvious indeed. Throws the right hand down again and, and moves in. And next time he does that, it will be another point. And this is tight as it is. He cannot afford to keep losing points, Lawrence Coley. Looking for the right hand there, Akoli, but 
but he's moving around the target. He's a little bit skittish at times, so those feet which he was setting more earlier in the fight. He's not doing it in quite the same way now. And Marcus McDonald is going to take another point away. So that is the second point for Lawrence O'Connor, who's lost here. Shot. Left hook from Akoli again. 
He's having a big round here at Coley. He's putting a dent in Billum Smith here. You can see it. For the fourth bit of Smith landed a decent short left hook as well. You're right, man. He did. Big right hand again. Right at the end of the round, the Billum Smith is taking these, but I'm just beginning to wonder how much longer you can take them for. We're two thirds of the way through this fight, and this has been so physical, so grueling. You know, he needed a big round, a Coley. He did, and he came out with a good, good response. They want you to get disqualified, and that's it. You're not even trying to fight you no more. Not the one to from right here. Put that a duck in and throw it. Throw it from right here, and put another jab back to the middle. the body there from McCauley, and again he started quickly, that last round was his without a shadow of a doubt on the cards, it could well be pretty tight. A little bit better, better head move from there from Billum Smith, just tried to slip outside of McCauley's jab and land his. Down to the body there with Coley. Good left hook. Okay, okay. Coley's holding. He's got to be careful here. He's holding. Marcus McDonald has been wise to it right from the very, very start. I think he's dealt with it fairly. He warned the Coley enough times. He's continued to warn him after he took the first point, before he took the second. Another right hand went in there from Coley, but Billum Smith just took it, took it really well. Now, I don't, if he sort of warmed into the fight, was numb to the punches, or Coley, the sharpness is just starting to fade a little bit after this grueling fight. I, I think when they come together. Just gonna take a point off when that happens, but it's when he literally steps forward and grabs hold and doesn't try to punch. Long right hand again there from McCauley. Billum Smith just pulling his weight back, managed to ride that one. And he is showing a very, very solid chin, but I keep just sounding that caveat that we're in the ninth round, we've still got the 10th, the 11th, the 12th to come. All of a sudden, you've been taking them five, but we'll come that moment, you could come that moment where it's one too many. Nice. Check left hook from there, Bruce and he's following. A couple of right hands, one to the body, one to the head. To the final 30 seconds of the round. See where Coley likes to look for that right hand, he leans to his right side and he's almost leading into Billum Swift's left hook every time. He comes in behind the jab there and grabs hold, and that's exactly what Matt was talking about. A couple of good right hands there from Billum Smith. He's finishing this round nice and strong. Well, let's see how Joshua Bryce is seeing it. He's done ringside with Andy. As well, how are you seeing it and which way is this going to go? It's a, it's a hard one to say, Andy. I'll tell you what, this is championship boxing. Lawrence started well, Chris put him down, the points is at 10. Like I said, it's got all the ingredients. For me, it's a very, very close fight sitting ringside. To be honest with you, I'm finding it very hard to score. Is he running the risk of getting disqualified here? Lawrence Akoli, he's been warned, he's had points taken off. I mean, there's one more point to be taken off before the disqualification, but what I do want to say is, in the inside, both men are holding. Yes, Lawrence is guilty a bit of holding a bit more, but from where I'm sitting, both men are holding. It's boxing, let's inside fighting, but of course, if one guy's holding and not punching, they have to be penalised. As we go down the stretch, which corner would you rather be in right now? With whose shoes? I'm, I would rather be the referee, if I'm going to see you. OK, thanks very much, thank you. Well, I'm reluctant to correct Josh, but there is no three strikes and you're out. Another point goes, it will not necessarily be a disqualification. As I said earlier on,
everything is at the discretion of the referee. He can take points all night if he wants to outscore the final fighter. It's his decision. Yeah, you can't disqualify a world champion in a world title fight. I think, Andy, he might just keep taking points off. Some of the, one of the members of uh, the Akoli Corner being told off on of Sugar Hill. Sugar Hill getting a stern talking to there from Marcus McDonald. Maybe the trainer was suggesting that the referee is doing his best to favour Billum Smith in this fight. I wouldn't be surprised if he is suggesting it. it's the kind of mischievous thing you, you would say, possibly. No truth to it, of course. Tenth round. And Nicoli again is just looking to keep the energy high, the work rate high. And some of these rounds are last few. Nicoli goes down to his knees. And the referee, Marcus McDonald, is counting. He's back up to his feet. The knockdown signal by the referee. And Nicoli just comes straight back over to the corner.
Smith, and the referee can have a good look at that from his vantage point there, Marcus McDonald. The intensity of this right from the very beginning, the physicality of it has been what we expected, really, but what has been so impressive about Willem Smith is that he has just not really shown any ill effect from anything that Lawrence Acoli has done. His battery hasn't really drained throughout the course of it either. Well, Acoli at the moment, he has to get to that double distance range, and it's a one big shot. Big right hand or big left hook, then he falls over the front foot and he holds. Willem Smith got boys getting hit with that first shot. Like this. Big right hand covers it, holds. He's always had that guard up, Billy Smith. Press. He's been disciplined with it all the way through into the final He's minute. Point up again, and Marcus McDonald is marching a curly back across the ring here. And this could be another point. No, it's a He's warning. talking about the heads, he's talking about the shoulder. Head. And it's another warning. And I think the referee has been fair with Akoli. He's given him plenty of warnings. He's given him more warnings at these taken points. Comfortably. And let's give credit to Chris Billum Smith, knowing that Akoli likes to hold. And he's met, and he hasn't really held on the inside. He's let Akoli hold. He's at times yeah, he's tried to draw attention to the referee. Yeah, but right, right, he hasn't he hasn't played on it. No, no, no. 20 seconds left in this 11th round. Looking for that right hand again there, McCauley, as he pulls forward. Billum Smith trying to find the short left hook on the inside. And disentangles himself. In comes the left hand. Down goes McCauley. There was a punch in there that time. And he's counting again. Gets to the count of eight. The bell goes at the end of the round. And that is another knockdown in the 11th. The water left hand in there. The Coley seemed to lose his balance, come forward, grab hold of the leg of Willem Smith. We'll see it again, but for me, it looked like a legitimate knockdown. Yeah, I need to see it again, Andy. The problem we've got sometimes is if you get hit, let's have a look. Is this the one? So Coley's, he took a couple there and he's trying to hold on. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know because if you get hit in your way and you're on your way down, whether it's technically you, you, your balance is gone, it doesn't matter. If you get hit on the way down, it's a knockdown. But there, he was sort of hit. They came together. He stumbled over. There were left hands landed, but they were landed quite a long time before he actually ended up going down. Well, either way, there's, there's three, there's been three knockdowns and there's been two or three points up. He must be, he must need a knockout, not a, co a colo. Absolutely, knockdowns if they are signalled, if they are given by the referee, if they are counted, they cannot be disregarded by the ringside judges. You can try and fudge the scoring of the round and score it a 10-9 rather than a 10-8 by interpreting the other fighter being dominant enough for the rest of the round to allow you to do that but you can't just ignore it if you disagree with it you cannot just ignore it so Lawrence Acoli has just got to go for broke here three knockdowns two points off it is surely impossible now for him to win this on the cards and again he just steps in looking for that right hand Earlier in the fight, the feet were just a little bit more set, but as he's got more desperate down the stretch, he's looked for that right, he's coming behind it, and Billum Smith has, has eaten plenty of them. Yeah. Billum Smith still trying to march a Coley down. We've, we've, we've less than two minutes to go in this last round. He doesn't need to switch off, doesn't need to make any mistakes, but still pressing the fight. The strength he has shown here, Billum Smith, the conditioning of fitness has been has been remarkable because nobody has been able to live with Akoli's physicality. Matty Askin couldn't do it when Akoli had three points taken off. He still won wide on the cards. Askin, a good, good fighter. But Billum Smith has matched him for strength, and that takes all, him through. All, all that wrestling, all that clinching, it's really physically draining. You know, also the nerves, energy, and the... the, 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 the 
conditioning. These two have sparred, they've done so much sparring together. How much wrestling and fighting and working on the inside have they done in the gym? To know all about each other, know how they want to hold. And then Chris Billum Smith, to his credit tonight, nullifying that and using it to his advantage. Good right hand there from McCauley, that just hit Billum Smith high on the head. And again, just made those feet just give a little bit of ground, but he's running out of time here, Lawrence McCauley. He's got to try and line Chris Billum Smith up for one big right hand. Can he find it? Billum Smith just backing up a little bit. We're up to 20 seconds to go. Little fake from McCauley, looks for that long right hand, lands it. But again, Willem Smith just managed to ride it. Time is running out here on Lawrence McCauley's World Championship reign, you would feel. Everybody around ringside on their feet. There goes the final foul. Shane McGuigan quickly into the ring, these two embracing. And with the trainer as well. There were some time rounds in there as well. Lawrence Acoli went for it, hammer and tongs towards the end there. And we have to wait and see what the scorecards say. But there is a favourite in this race now. Yes, Andy. That's fine. I mean, some of them knockdowns a bit harsh. He was warned time and time again about the holding. So maybe fortunate, maybe not, had them points taken off. But if you consider the first five points against him, he would have had to have won all of them five rounds just to be even on the card. And then you're already wondering whether Chris Billups have picked up three rounds over these 12. I think, I think there's a new champion. I think so, but I, I just don't see how he, he, could, he could have lost on points now, like you said, you factor in the points taken off and the knockdowns. Well, there's his wife for ringside. She was at the weigh-in yesterday with his son Frank, who turned one yesterday. We knew the sportsmanship would be there at the end, and we have not been let down on that score. One thing that Willem Smith had that none of Akoli's previous opponents had was the familiarity. Everybody else got in there with him, and they just found him so difficult to deal with, so much better than they expected him to be. And Willem Smith. Enjoying the moment here, you can't be completely relaxed just yet. Strange things happen in boxing, we all know that. But just look at these scenes. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 full championship rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for the official decision. Judge Benjamin Rodriguez sees the contest 112 to 112. Judge Diana Drews Milani sees it 116 to 107, while Judge Bob Williams sees the contest 115 to 108. Declaring the winner by majority. Scores will 
absolutely of no concern. And Coley hugging his friend. He'll be bitterly, bitterly disappointed. But maybe we'll see these two do this again. He deserves a lot of credit to Coley. 63 days ago, he did 12 rounds against David Light. And he accepted this challenge to walk into Philip Smith's backyard. Ladies and gentlemen, your new champion of the world, Chris Billum Smith. Fairy tales do come true. I mean, what more is there to say? Sum this up for us. I don't know what's just happened. My whole life's just gone so quick and come to this moment, and I have no. This is the, this is perfect. Like, there's nothing more. Like, against a great champion in Lawrence, a friend who has never opposed to getting beaten, has given me. Hard, a very, very hard to around there, and you know, it wasn't the most entertaining fight, but that's what Lawrence is so effective at. But I believe we did enough to win it, and I think the scorecard showed that. And uh, yeah, it's crazy. I was, I was sick in bed all week, I, I didn't eat from Tuesday to Thursday, and I, uh, I mean, it was easy making weight, but I had no energy. I managed to put on a brave face in the workout on Wednesday. I had the press on Thursday, but I was sick in bed all week. And I just want to dedicate this to my mum, um, who's got breast cancer at the moment. And uh, mum, this is for you. I love you so much. Thank you. Let me just ask you, you visualised it, you and me, we've heard all about it. Could you have visualised anything like that? Three knockdowns, two points off. I'm sure you were hurt at periods uh, in that fight. Yeah, uh, yeah, you know, I, I, I pictured me dropping Lawrence with that left hook all, all week, all camp. Um, that first knockdown was exactly what I've envisioned. Um, and, you know, that is part of it. I've had a whole host of a huge amount of support, help to get me here, uh, including some of Lawrence's team who used to be part of my team. But, you know, the McGuigans take me on, on a, on a whim, and... They're just, they've just got me here. I, do, I have no words. I, 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 I has not sunk in. What's going through your mind when 1-1-2, one, 1-1-2 one, two, one, one, two comes out, by the way? Uh, as soon as they call a draw first, it's a majority decision. And then I heard the scorecards, and I was like, well, I haven't lost every round when I heard the 108. And then I was like, it's, it's going to be under new. And then, you know, Mo said it, and I, I just, I don't know what to say. Impossible question, but how on earth do you top this? I, I, I'll never top this, I don't think. I mean, you know, there's a lot of things I didn't think I'd top, but, uh, yeah, this is crazy. I, I probably sound concussed because I have no words. I'm not, but, uh, yeah, I have no words to sum this up. This is the greatest night of my career. Probably always will be, but thank you, everyone. You created this for me. And um, you've helped me achieve my dream here. I've just won a world title at Dean Court in front of my hometown and that is the greatest thing I'll ever say.